This is a fountain pen flex nib. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use one properly. Flex nibs on fountain pens are a ton of fun and you can do all sorts of great calligraphy with them, but there are a couple rules to know and you also need to know what type of flex nib you're dealing with. So first I'm quickly gonna go over the different types of fountain pen flex nibs and then I'm gonna show you how to use it properly so you don't damage your flex nib fountain pens. Okay, so we're working with two main types here, right? Right here you have a steel nibbed flex pen and this one is made of 14 karat gold. They have slightly different characteristics so you have to use them differently. There are also two other mystery types of flex nibs which don't really align into either of these categories. First of all, a steel nib. It's relatively inexpensive and a great way to start using flex nibs. You have to know that it requires a little more pressure than your average gold flex nib in order to create the line variation that you want out of flex nibs like this. As you can see, my fingers really have to press down and you can sort of feel the resistance when you get to that point. If you go any farther than uh, a moderate sort of line variation, maybe increasing your line width three or four times from what you would normally have, that's how far most standard steel flex nibs can go. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have gold flex nibs. Now gold is a much softer metal and it can be made springier with different alloys, so you can maybe put a little more line variation into what you're writing with, but you have to be careful because it does not require nearly as much pressure to use a gold nib flex pen than a steel nib would. So if you start out with a steel nib and get used to it and then sort of graduate to a gold nib pen, you sort of have to relearn the amount of pressure that you need to use. You can see here that I'm really not using nearly as much pressure. My fingers aren't as white, you know, pressing into that nib. And I'm still creating a great amount of line variation, a little more than what your regular steel flex nib would be able to create. And then I mentioned the other two types. They're not nearly as common, but they're still out there and a bunch of fun. First off, you have vintage fountain pens. These are usually gold nibs that come with a lot of great flex and line variation, but you have to keep in mind, you have to treat them much gentler than your modern gold flex nibs because they weren't really designed with this exact purpose in mind most of the time. Modern gold flex nibs, you're meant to flex and they sort of take that into account in their manufacturing, whereas these vintage flex nibs, you have to go a little easier on and be more careful with. It's not quite as easy to obtain a good vintage flex nib because you have to really know what you're looking for. You gotta go on eBay, search through a bunch of different sort of forums and stuff like that. But if you get a good find, it really is worth it. And this, this is a great example of that right here. This is a Pelican 400NN that I found on eBay and it arrived with just a wonderful flex nib. A really lucky find there and it just shows that there's really a lot of stuff out there that will just blow your mind. And then finally, you have custom modified modern flex nibs. These can be found in both steel and gold, depending on what individual nib meisters are working with, a nib meister being a person that works on fountain pen nibs. And you can see here with those cuts and those little inlets, this has been hand modified to create more flexibility. And honestly, this is probably the best option in my opinion, but you're really paying for a lot of experience and handiwork with this, so obviously it's not for everyone. Now, with that little education out of the way, we can get into the fun stuff. So, how are we going to start using fountain pen flex nibs? So, rule number one is you have to keep your pen aligned straight with the paper. It can't be twisted to one side or the other. Because you're going to be pressing down for this, you don't want to be pressing down on one side, on one tine of the fountain pen nib, more than the other tine. So this is a good thing to practice because sometimes people have a habit, including me, have a habit of twisting the nib to one side or the other when they want to write. And under normal writing circumstances, it's not that bad. But when you're trying to flex, it could really damage your nib. Secondly, this is the most important by far. You only want to be applying pressure when writing a downstroke. That's writing directly downwards on the paper. If you do not use an underhand writing technique where your nib is directly under the line that you're writing, your downstrokes will not be up and down on the paper, but the lines that you want to use pressure on are the ones that are parallel to the tines of your fountain pen nib. You only want to be applying pressure 
when you're writing lines that go directly parallel to your fountain pen nib and anything else will create too much pressure on one of the tines that could lead to damage. So you can see here, I'm doing, I'm applying an underhand writing technique to where I'm only applying pressure on those downstrokes. And then you can see here, I'm sort of writing from the side. You can still flex using different writing techniques, but you have to keep, keep in mind essentially what is your downstroke? Where are you drawing a line that's parallel to your fountain pen nib? I can flex from the side. I can flex writing underhand. And then I can flex even if I'm writing overhand. So when I say flex on the downstroke, <laughs> what that really means is just whichever position you're writing from, only apply pressure when you're writing lines going down parallel to the way that your nib is pointed. Of course, the third step is don't press too hard. It takes a little bit of time to sort of understand and get to feel your fountain pen and what it responds to. It's going to give you feedback and sort of say, hey, you know, you're pressing too hard now. But you don't want to be pushing that line over time as it could really wear out your nib. Instead, you want to go easy on it. It'll be nice to you. And you can slowly learn to find over time where that limit is, because if you push it too far, then your tines will be permanently bent upward. We call that your tines being sprung, and that can't be fixed under normal circumstances. You need an expert to sort of realign that fountain pen nib. So it really helps to use minimal pressure, especially when using a gold nib, and find where that limit is with your flex nib over time. One final thing to talk about is the ink that you're going to be using. Because all fountain pens can use any sort of fountain pen ink, and there are thousands of them out there. As long as you don't use India ink, don't use India ink. Pigmented ink should not be used in fountain pens. Because you can't clean out pigment-based ink from fountain pens. Now, with this in mind, the ink that you use is important, but I can't really give you any specific recommendations because it's a, a huge spectrum from whether inks are wet or dry, and the wetter the ink, usually the better for fountain pen flex writing. Now, of course, these inks will work in tandem with your feed, which is the delivery mechanism that delivers the ink from the body of the pen to the nibs you can write with it. Some feeds are made of plastic, others are made of ebonite or hard rubber. And ebonite is generally considered better for flex nibs because it delivers ink quicker uh, I don't know the science behind it. Some people claim because it's a natural material, it allows the ink to flow more freely. Different feeds will have different flow levels of ink. Some feeds may deliver a lot more ink to the nib. Some might not deliver much at all. And you want as much ink as possible to be delivered to your nib because flexing uses a lot of ink, right? So when you're not getting enough ink, you'll experience something called railroading. And railroading is when the ink isn't able to keep that surface tension in between the two tines when they're spreading apart and so it only is going down individual tines and that gap in the middle isn't filled with ink and that usually means you're pushing it a little too hard now it might not be due to the nib it might be because your ink's too dry or your feed's not delivering enough ink but once you get railroading that's the sort of tell to communicate to you that you're pushing a little too hard and that's a great way to to sort of find that limit of when the pen is right. Now you can interchange inks and see which inks work better for you. Personally, I find that black inks are usually pretty good for flex nibs and different colors may make inks a little drier, but that's certainly not a universal rule. And then also you might be able to take your pens with plastic feeds and do what I've done here, which is replace the plastic feed with an ebonite feed, and this is red ebonite. It's a feed made by the Flexible Nib Factory, which makes feeds for these purposes. Essentially, the ink and feed is the other part of the equation that makes flexing work, and it's a great thing to pay attention to to determine how hard you should be pushing your flex nibs. So, these are the main three things to keep in mind when you're flexing. Like we said, first of all, your nib has to be aligned with the paper. You don't want to angle your pen from side to side to keep it straight on. Only apply pressure when you're writing in a line that's parallel to your nib. You don't want to be pushing down and then pressing up. You don't want to be pushing down and pressing side to side. Only you can see the tines are up and down. 
only apply pressure and pull downwards. And finally, don't push too hard. You'll be able to gradually tell over time where that limit is with your pen, and you don't ever want to push past that point because it's a point of no return. Now I'll give you a quick example of all of these different pens in action so you can see without any of my <laughs> commentary what they look like, and you, then you can apply that to your own writing. So, I really hope this was helpful. I've been getting a lot of questions about this particular topic, and I wanted to share my personal thoughts on the matter. So, if you found this useful, please do feel free to like, you know, subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with more similar content in the future. And thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.